The town of Bodie faded into a ghost town during the 1940s. In 1962, the small part of the town that had survived the 1932 fire was designated a state historic park and a national historic landmark. remains of the town of Bodie, preserved in a state of arrested decay, exist as it did when the last residents left. The interiors are maintained as they were left, still furnished and stocked with goods, providing a snapshot of the past. Bodie is special in that many buildings and artifacts were protected from theft and vandalism. Well into the 20th century, leaving us what we have today. Other nearby mining camps and towns such as Aurora and Masonic have very little left due to the amount of theft and vandalism that occurred after these places were abandoned and are an example of what would have been Bodhi's fate had caretakers not ensured this place would be protected for future generations even before it became a California state park. When artifacts are removed from the park, part of Bodhi's story disappears and is stolen from every other person who would have seen that item in the future.
cold. I see my breath. Pancakes are cooking. Get all that syrup on there. than what I'm comfortable taking the cross track down without any kind of recovery gear and why it's been manageable. It just gets a little bit more rutted out. It's a lot more of this. While I don't want to backtrack, it is the smarter thing to do while I'm at a place I can turn around because so far it's just been a uh, single track shrub on both sides. So I'm gonna take advantage of this open space and back up and turn around.
In 1881, a lumber community was established here to harvest the forest and transport wood to Bodie. The sawmill quickly began producing ties for railroad construction, and by November of 1881, a 32-mile narrow-gauge railway was built to link the Timberland to Bodie. Steam engines were brought in to transport the wood, logs from the forest were unloaded on the west side of the mill, rolled into the mill, and placed on a carriage to be sawed into planks. With at least four saws and a crew of 25 men, the mill was capable of cutting 80,000 board feet of lumber per day. 